First thing I'm going to do is format the memory card. So I just use this SD formatter program just to make sure it's all clean and good. Okay, that's done. Thanks for that. Now put the actual Raspbian image on there. Just open up the file and write that. Now I'm not going to make you wait while it does that, so I'll just skip ahead a bit. Okay, now that's done. Now we've got the Raspbian image on there, so we can connect to it and set things up. Now that that's done, let's take the card and put it in the Raspberry Pi. I'm ready to put that on the network. I'm now going to connect the Raspberry Pi to the network in my little network lab here. So just connect it there into one of the ports on the switch and uh, plug in the power. Now that will get an address from the DHCP server and then we can SSH into it and do everything remotely. Now we can connect to the Raspberry Pi remotely with SSH. So just SSH with the username Pi at the address that I got from the DHCP server. Uh, type yes because we know that. Now the password is Raspberry. And now we're in. Now the first thing you do is do sudo raspberry config. Brings up some config. First thing you want to do is expand that file system. Uh, change your password if you want. Looking at the boot options, I just keep it on a console because we're not going to have a monitor on this. And again, you can you can set the um, time zone and all your country settings, but I'm not going to bother for this demonstration. That's pretty much it. Um, host name. I'll give it a host name so we know what we're talking about. We'll call it the TV server. for now. Everything else is pretty fine as standard. Um, so I'll say OK to that and reboot. Now once that's rebooted we'll connect again and set up the specifics for the actual TV server. Now for the TV tuner I've got this um, Ava Media uh, USB TV, TV tuner. So I'm just going to get the antenna and plug it into one of the USB ports. Now we'll go back to the console. Now we've got the TV tuner connected to the Raspberry Pi. We'll connect up to it again. And we'll look for that card in the system. Just grab for DVB. And what we'll notice is it's found it, but it's complaining about missing firmware right here. It needs that file to run. So you have to find the file whatever card you're using it will need a particular um, piece of firmware. So for this one I have it here and I'm just going to copy that from my other Linux box to the TV server. Okay, so it's on there now. So if I go back to it You can see it there. Now we need to put it in the right spot. So we'll just move it to lib firmware. Just reboot that now. Okay, now that's rebooted, we'll connect to it again. And we'll have a look for that uh, device again. And this time we see in warm state, that means it's found it and it's good. So it's happy now. And also to confirm, you can check the dev directory for um, a DVB device. And there it is. So now we can make use of it. Before we do that, we'll just update the system. Now there's a couple of programs we want to install. First is DVB apps. Now this has just some utilities to, to do DVB kind of things, to scan for channels and such. Okay, and the other one is the actual DVB Blast program. 
This is the program that streams the UDP multicast out. Now that that's done, we need to scan our area for what's available. Now if you go to uh, user shared Now that that's done, we need to scan our area for what's available. And um, if you look in user share DVB, DVB legacy, DVBT, you'll see basically lots of cities that have different parameters. So for me, I'm in Brisbane, so I'll just uh, show you what's in that file. User share DVB. Legacy, DVT, AU, Brisbane. Now, basically, there's six frequencies being transmitted um, in Brisbane and the parameters that it uses to scan. So, we run a program called Scan and we use that file of parameters. So, and you, of course, use wherever you are. And what this does you see it tunes in, okay the first frequency it found these services so you've got all the ABC services and it'll keep going now channel 7, you know you've got 7, 7, 2, these other ones uh, the 9 network ones so all of these are on the same frequency, all of these are on the same frequency and all up there are 6 frequencies here so here's channel 10's frequency now we'll have SPS and lastly, Bris31. Now the output is this big bunch of parameters, but what it basically has, I'll use channel 10 as our demo, so you see its name and the frequency, a whole bunch of um, parameters and things, and then right at the end is the PID, that's the ID for that, that channel if you like. So uh, channel 1 is PID 1601, channel 10 1605. So we need that information later to create our um, multicast streams. So for now I'll run that command again and just put output it to channels.conf. Instead of printing it to the screen it'll make a file of all that information. Okay and there it is. So now we have a file called channels.conf that contains all the parameters we need just for our reference. What we need to do now is make a config file for dvblast to use. Uh, so we'll make one for channel 10 and 11. So if we go back to that channels comp file and just have a look. We'll have a look down for channel 10 and 11. We'll see, okay, channel 10 has a PID of 1605. And channel 11 has a PID of 1608. We've got to be on the same frequency. So the frequency is the same because the card can only tune one frequency at a time. So what I'll do is I'll make a file called, um, oh, let's see, config 10. And the format is, is like this. You pick your multicast group for the first one, I pick port 20,000. One, can't quite remember what that was for, but I know it's one. And now the, the PID, so for 10 it was 1605. So you can put that little comment in there if you want. And I'll make another one, oops, a different group for for 11, which was 1608. And that's just a simple config file for DV Blast. Now to run it, you use DV Blast, adapter 0. Now that was that um, device, if you go back to slash dev slash DVB, it'll be adapter 0. Um, the frequency, which again, you can find here it's that frequency there that you scanned. Uh, the config file, now that's the config we just made so we use config 10 modulation qualm 64 again this is in this information up here you can find it uh, bandwidth is 7 megahertz that's what we use in Australia E for EPG data and that's about it. If you run that you'll see it tunes them in and that is now putting UDP data out into the network. Okay, we can test that now with VLC. Um, if we open a network stream, 
use RTP and the multicast group that we made in our config file for channel 10 and just play that and in it comes and it's even got the title of the um, TV program and we had channel 11 as well on a different multicast group so if I open a different multicast group we'll get the other channel as well so there they are now you have to make sure that your network can handle multicast because if it's not set up properly with proper switching you will cripple the network very quickly um, I'll talk about that in another video though one thing to be aware of um, if you look at the route on the Raspberry Pi it's got its local network here that we expect and for everything else it has a default gateway that's fine uh, that's why it works now if we didn't have let's say that default gateway if we just had an IP address on our own network the multicast wouldn't leave the Raspberry Pi because the multicast group is not part of this route okay so you know like everything else it looks at its routing table first and if it doesn't have a destination that it can send it to it, it won't put it out anywhere so this works because I've got a gateway set up so it just puts it out on the interface anyway but you at least have to define some sort of um, route for multicast traffic to fall into so that it actually leaves the Raspberry Pi in the first place you may want to get more Raspberry Pis and TV tuners so you can stream all the stations out simultaneously to the network